I can still remember my good friend Robin Hood, as if it were yesterday. His brave deeds were known throughout the land, and he became a hero, a symbol of hope for the poor and needy. It is just my account of some of the many adventures I went on with my dear friend, the hero Robin Hood. Many years ago now, England was ruled by King Richard the Lionheart. The king was a brave and noble man, always ready to help the weak and those less fortunate than himself. When Richard was called away to war, his brother, Prince John, was left to rule the country. Prince John was not a nice man. He was mean and greedy. He was determined to become king himself one day. This was a sad time for the people of England. Prince John increased taxes and took away people's lands and money. Many people became homeless, and with nowhere to live, they made homes for themselves in the forests that covered the land. The most famous of these forests was Sherwood Forest, right here in Nottingham. I lived in Sherwood Forest alongside Robin Hood and his band of fearless friends, Robin loved the forest. He spent many hours roaming through the trees, collecting firewood, hunting, and relieving rich travellers of their possessions. Robin was also a patient teacher. He enjoyed training others, showing them how to fire an arrow, true and steady, or defend themselves against attack. Robin helped the poor villages of Nottinghamshire, and they loved him for it. However, not everyone loved him. The Sheriff of Nottingham despised Robin Hood and looked for any opportunity to capture him. One day, while travelling through Sherwood Forest, the Sheriff had lost his way and stumbled upon Robin hunting for deer. The Sheriff drew his sword and lunged towards Robin. However, Robin was quick on his feet and easily dodged the blade. He drew his own sword and a struggle ensued. The sheriff was no match for Robin, and he was quickly disarmed, and Robin escorted him out of the Sherwood Forest with a warning that next time they met in the forest he wouldn't be so lucky. The sheriff was furious, and from that day on he vowed to capture the outlaw Robin Hood. Remember the day Robin first met Marion? He was wandering through the forest when he saw a beautiful lady. Look into my eyes, you will see just what you mean to And I think he fell in love with her on the spot. Search your heart, search your soul. Two of them met often in the forest, and each time Robin would present her with a bunch of white anemones he collected from the woodland hedgerows. 
They were so in love. But Marion's parents were not happy. They wanted their daughter to marry a rich nobleman to be able to take good care of her, someone like the Sheriff of Nottingham. I can't help it, there's nothing I want more. You know it's true, everything I do. Marion was horrified at the thought of marrying him, who was a scheming and sinister man. His hatred of Robin Hood was well known. Many times the sheriff and his henchmen almost did capture him. On one occasion, we're in a small village near Nottingham distributing the gold that Robin had collected from rich wayfarers, when the sheriff and his men appeared. ushered us into a small church where we claimed sanctuary. A travelling friar was in the church praying when we burst in. He welcomed us and offered us a safe place to stay. However, the Sheriff of Nottingham was determined not to let Robin escape this time and tried to force his way into the church. This made the friar livid and he led us through a secret tunnel into the woods where well, we made our escape. <laughs> From that moment on, Friar Tuck became a loyal friend of Robin Hood. Another time, Robin helped a poor blacksmith and his son, Will Scarlet. The blacksmith couldn't afford to pay the huge taxes the sheriff had collected from the people of Nottingham. The sheriff was not happy about this and decided to pay him a visit. Young Will Scarlet was a brave boy and when he saw the sheriff approaching he rushed forward to defend his father but the blacksmith held the young boy back. sent him into the forest to ask Robin Hood for help. As the sheriff drew his sword, Robin pulled an arrow from his quiver, placed it in his bow and let it fly. The arrow landed at the sheriff's feet, causing him to halt. We advanced upon the sheriff. The sheriff, seeing that he was outnumbered, decided to retreat.
course, all these events fueled the sheriff's hatred of Robin Hood, and he decided to beat Robin by marrying his beloved Marion. One day, while she was collecting firewood in the forest, the sheriff spotted her. He ordered his second-in-command, Guy of Gisborne, to seize Marion. He locked her away in one of the towers in his castle until their wedding day. When Robin heard about this, he was furious, and he called us all together to hatch a plan to rescue Marion. We skirted round the edge of the forest, until Nottingham was inside. Robin then slipped into the castle unnoticed. He moved stealthily towards the tower Marion was imprisoned in. Robin threw open the cell door, grabbed Marion and swiftly headed for the gatehouse. And by the time we met them in the Great Hall, the alarm had been raised. Robin and the Sheriff danced round each other, trading hits, but neither seemed to gain an advantage. Tired after battling his way through the castle, Robin stumbled. The sheriff held his sword aloft, ready to plunge it into Robin's heart. When Marion crept up behind him and swung a huge candlestick at his head, the sheriff fell to his knees and the sword missed its mark. Marion helped him to his feet and dragged him out of the great hall as we scattered into Sherwood. The sheriff stumbled after us into the forest, but was quickly disorientated. He stumbled over a large tree root and lunged towards a gorge. He grabbed a hold of a branch to weaken from the blow to his head. He struggled to pull himself back up. The sheriff shouted for help, hoping one of his men would hear him, and rushed to his aid, but Robin and Marion were the only people nearby. Marion tried to drag Robin deeper into the forest towards the safety of our camp, but Robin knelt in front of the gorge and pulled with all his strength. He managed to drag the sheriff to safety. But it put a great strain on his already weakened body. Marion helped him to his feet, passed him his bow, and they turned to head for home.
sheriff's henchmen had drawn their bows and trained their arrows on Robin. The sheriff stepped into the line of fire and ordered his men to lower their bows. Robin asked for his bow, and with the last of his strength, he drew it back, took his last breath, and let the arrow fly, making Marion promise to bury him wherever the arrow fell. I saw the sun begin to dim and felt that winter wind blow cold. A man learns who is there for him when the glitter fades and the walls won't hold. Cause from that rubble, what remains can only be what's true. If all was lost, there's more I gained Cause it led me back To you From now on These eyes will not be blinded by the light From now on once waited till tomorrow starts tonight Tonight Let this promise in me start Like an anthem in my heart From now on Champagne with kings and queens The politicians praised my name But those were someone else's dreams The pitfalls of the man I became For years and years I chased their cheers A crazy speed of always needing more But when I stop and see you here
friend Robin Hood may have died, but the legend lives on. The name Robin Hood was celebrated throughout the land, and his spirit lives on through the brave men and women who continue to fight against injustice and help those less fortunate than themselves. <laughs>